Hi, uh, welcome. In my series on science, today we will talk about how the humans discovered that the earth goes around the sun. In the ancient times, our ancestors must have looked upon the night sky and be really amazed and wondered by them. Uh, the night sky is so interesting. It is full of patterns and uh, because they were uh, hunter folks, they must have imagined hunter hunting related stuff like bears and bows and arrows in them. Uh, another question that must have popped up is that what governs their motions? For example, the when we see the sun, it, it comes from the east, it rises in the east and sets in the west. Similarly, these patterns, like if you imagine a bear in the sky, the bear rises in the east and sets in the west. And at different times of the year, in different seasons, there are different uh, patterns in the night sky. So the pattern that you see in the night sky changes over time and, and it is repetitive. So after a year, after in the next summers, you will see the same pattern that you saw last summer. In fact, if you made careful observation across many years, you can really predict uh, the seasons. And we are talking about a time which was before the calendars, before we had divided, before we measure time, before we had systematically divided time into its units, years, months, and days. In those, I mean, that was a time when we didn't even know that the earth went around the sun, so there was no really concept of a year. Uh, and imagine the time before all this. Uh, uh, we didn't even know that the earth rotates on its axis or anything else. Uh, at that time, it was pretty crucial that you could observe the night sky and predict the seasons because uh, uh, if you could watch across over many years, as I said, you could predict the seasons and if you could predict that the, predict the onset of winter, you would know that I should start collecting wood or I should start collecting food. It was really a matter of uh, life and death back then to be able to uh, predict the seasons and in the stars there was a massive calendar all you had to do was to carefully observe and, and learn to read them all planets uh, sorry all stars moved with the uh, with uh, predictable their motion was predictable but there was these special stars they they did not belong to any constellation uh, we could see these patterns but these special stars would move from one constellation to another they would over time change constellations they were wanderers of the night sky and imagine how much we must have felt the love we would have felt for these uh, special stars because like us they were wanderers they traveled in the night sky and uh, in fact sometimes they would stop going forward and would start going backward and and uh, and we'll start going forward again these special stars were named the planets and this is a photo of mars taken over several months in which we see that it goes forward then it starts going backward across the background of the night sky and then starts going forward again and this has been known in even in, in egyptian times 3000 years ago where the egyptians called mars as sagdet m khatket which meant one who travels backwards uh, and we could see five of these and these five special were called the planets and they were named Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, the heavenly objects we knew had a lot of impact on human life. We probably thought that they were divine and uh, they were created by God and so the sun clearly gave us, uh, gave us food and warmth and light. The moon controlled the tides in the ocean. The stars gave us season or at least it looked like it did. The question was what was the impact of the planets? If everything in the night sky had an impact, what was the impact of the planets? And that's how astrology began. Astrology began with the idea that, that at the time of your birth, the, the presence of planets in certain constellation would, uh, would govern your destiny and your fate in life. I want to make it very clear that astrology, it is known that astrology is not a science and as we learn what science is, we must also learn what is not a science. The chance that you will win a lottery when Saturn is in a particular constellation are sim exactly the same as it is in any other constellation. Saturn is made up of dust and gas and it doesn't care what you think. Saturn doesn't care. Uh, it 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 has no impact on on earthly endeavors of humankind uh, i know i say that astrology doesn't work and there are many published papers on it one of them i have given a reference in the end is that like science it can be shown to not work with 100 percent 
confidence it doesn't work with that the predictions don't work out all the time and that and that's why it's not a science in science if you if you have a theory it works 100% of the time otherwise the theory is incorrect there is no observed data for the hypothesis of astrology otherwise uh, how do you explain that two twin brothers who were born at the same time when the planets were in the same constellation uh, they they lead different lives uh, and that you can't explain that by astrology uh, in the ancient times the difference between astrology and astronomy was not clear astrology is a relic of the past uh, the ancient priests were both astronomers as well as astrologers uh, they truly believed that the planets and other heavenly objects governed the human fate but they didn't know better and that is fine but today the, the, and this is the sad part today we know that Saturn and other planets are just dust are, are uh, made of dust and they are just objects like, the, the, like our earth they have no impact on human endeavor but still people refuse to believe otherwise and continue to believe in astrology anyways coming back to our topic on uh, continuing our discussion on understanding the motion of the heavens the first person that I will talk about is Aristarchus he was born in Samos in 310 BC and this is the same place the same Greek island where Pythagoras was born and he proposed a heliocentric model in this model the Sun was at the center of the universe and earth went around the sun. Aristotle who lived before Aristarchus had proposed this, had considered this model but he had rejected it for several reasons as we will see. One of his objections was that well how if earth goes around the sun how do we have day and night? How do we see the sun come up in the east every day and, and set in the west every single day? Uh, he thought that if that were the case that would mean that the earth has to rotate on its axis uh, in the opposite direction from west to east but if that were true if earth really rotated on its axis that doesn't make any sense he said because uh, that would why aren't there why aren't there strong winds on the earth all the time if earth is rotating and secondly why aren't we thrown off the surface of the earth consider a ball if if you have water droplets on the ball and if you spin the ball the water droplets will fly off why aren't we as human beings thrown off of the surface of the planet of, of earth this was a valid objection another objection he had is that if earth is traveling around the sun what about the birds that I see in the sea flying around if earth moves away why aren't the birds left behind another objection that he had is that why don't we see parallax parallax is something that that is it, it is basically it, it is an illusion or it is an effect that you see when you observe two things uh, one farther image and one uh, one image uh, closer to you so for example let's let's take this example if if i put my thumb right here and if i close one of the eyes and if i see here i see p and if i close this eye and open the other eye i see that the words are a l l a x it seems as if my thumb moved as i changed my eye the reason why that happened is because because I am observing the the closer object always appears to move if you change your line of sight so continuing that argument if the earth rotates on its axis then the stars the nearby stars should up, should appear to change position against the backdrop of of farther stars and we don't see that for stars and this was a clearly an objection uh, well Aristarchus reasoned that this is because the stars are very very far much farther than that was thought at the time and it is it is clear that farther the object the lesser the parallax and that's and he said that there is parallax but it is so insignificant that you don't see it that was his argument however Aristotle was well respected at the time and also because it violated common sense that the earth was spinning Aristarchus heliocentric model helio means sun in Greek uh, his model that earth went around the sun was not accepted at the time uh, then came Ptolemy in 1980. Ptolemy was was uh, he believed in a geocentric model of the universe. In this model, the Earth was at the center, and everything uh, went around uh, the Earth. Uh, he in his model, there were celestial spheres, there were transparent spheres, and uh, to these spheres uh, were attached the heavenly objects. There. In, in his model essentially the earth was at the center and then there was a sphere 
uh, for moon, then a sphere for Mercury, then a sphere for Venus, then a sphere for Sun. And the heavenly objects were attached to these spheres. And as these transparent spheres rotated, the planets went uh, rotating around the Earth. There were seven spheres, one for Sun, one for Moon, five for the five planets, and the last sphere for the for the stars and and this is also where the phrase seventh heaven comes from uh, but what about retrograde motion what about the motion of the planets the planets seem to go forward and then they seem to come back and then they seem to go forward well for that Ptolemy thought of something called epicycles he said that the planets are not attached very rigidly to these spheres they they go in small circles around uh, these spheres and that's why when we look at them we see the retrograde motion going loop a loop a loop like this uh, this was a theory and it was supported by the church at the time as well because uh, because it it uh, uh, it coincided with church's view that the earth was divine and that it was still and that the god made the earth and it commanded the earth to be the center of the universe and everything went around the earth and uh, this model was the accepted view uh, for 1500 years until came Nicholas Copernicus in 1473 he was a he was born in Poland in a city named Torun and uh, he was a very religious man he was he was uh, both a priest and an astronomer and he seeked different explanation for for under, he tried to understand this retrograde motion of planets doing a loop a loop to him the epicycles uh, seemed unnatural and there were other uh, things uh, in Ptolemy's model such as why did, for example, the constellations follow such a yearly pattern? In different seasons, you would see the same uh, constellations rise up. In summers, the pattern was same as it was last year. And then during winters, the pattern would be same uh, as it was in last winters. Why did this pattern have such a... Why did these constellations have such a yearly pattern and yearly repetition cycle to it? Uh, in He published a book on his deathbed in 1543. Uh, the year he died, the book was named The Revolutionus uh, Orbium Celestium, which means On the Revolutions of Celestial Spheres. Uh, in this, he proposed that no, Earth was not the center of the universe, Sun was the center, and that everything went around the Sun. Uh, the, the first one was Mercury, then Venus, then Earth, and the Moon went around the Earth in its own sphere, and then the Mars, and then uh, Jupiter and Saturn, and then the stars. Uh, he had formulated this theory and uh, circulated something called Commentarius uh, earlier in his life anonymously, but he never published a book until until he was almost about to die, perhaps because he was afraid of the church. Uh, some of his propositions were quite neat. He proposed that the Earth and other planets went around the Sun in uniform circles and with uniform speeds. And this required that the Earth rotate on its axis to explain day and night. This also required that the stars be very far so that we don't see parallax, which is observed. So he also proposed that stars were very far. Uh, the Earth was not the center of the universe because it went around the sun. And that the retrograde motion of the planets is caused by, can be explained by the motion of the Earth. And his explanation is quite neat. Let's talk about it. His, imagine, let's think about this. Let's say you are going on a highway and there is a car going in parallel lane and it's moving in front of you and it's going high speed you will see that it's going farther from you let's say you speed up as you speed up you will start to catch up with the car and the car will appear to go back and if you slow down then the car will start to go forward again so you will see that the car went forward then came back and then started going forward again and this is what Copernicus said that both Earth and Mars for example are going in a circle around the planet uh, around sun and it is due to parallax against farther background stars as earth catches up with mars it starts it appears that it is going forward for example in this figure you see mars in position a b and then c as as earth catches up with venus and then d so it appears that mars is going back and then it starts to go forward so this was another neat theory uh, it was met with huge opposition we still haven't decided what is true it was met with it met at that time uh, it was met with huge criticism uh, majority of the people did not believe in it it violated both their common sense as well as religious belief people religious people 
thought that scripture tells them that earth is the center of the universe god created it and uh, and uh, earth is divine and copernicus himself did not publish it until he was almost about to die in fact martin luther who was a very famous priest and played a big role in the protestant uh, reform at the time he called uh, uh, copernicus a fool the church in fact put copernicus's book uh, on uh, forbidden books on the list of forbidden books and the book stayed there until 1835 uh, but then came galileo galilei galileo made huge contributions to science but one of his major contributions i think was that he made a telescope telescope means tele means far like in telephone uh, scope means to be able to see to be so telescope means to be one that enables us to be able to see far away objects uh, and this is a replica of uh, the telescope that is kept in uh, Los Angeles and Griffiths Observatory. I also visited the observatory a few days ago. It's pretty cool. Uh, Galileo was the first person to to be to, to look at the stars, and he could see more resolution, more better image because they were magnified. And when he looked at moon, he saw moon in its with its craters and everything. And then when he looked at the uh, Jupiter, when he looked at Jupiter, he noticed something exceptional, and this is what he saw. He described on 7th January 1610 that, well, I see uh, three fixed stars uh, very close to Jupiter, and they are very, very small, and they lie in almost a straight line across Jupiter. And then in subsequent nights, he noticed that one of those stars vanished. Now, how could that be? These, these, these stars were moving in a pattern which would, which would, uh, uh, which would not have which was inexplicable i mean you couldn't explain it fixed stars don't do that and how come that how come that that uh, star that i just saw a few days ago disappeared that must mean that it is it has gone behind jupiter and then few days ago it will it will come back this this led him to this led him to conclude that those fixed stars were were orbiting jupiter they were moons or satellites of jupiter this meant that not everything went around the earth earth was not divine jupiter's moon went around jupiter they didn't go around earth and ptolemy's model would have never uh, allowed for such objects that would uh, that would uh, follow jupiter the, everything in ptolemy's model would have should have uh, followed the earth and this observation was kind of a death sentence to to ptolemy's model uh, uh, so this is also another photo that is a closer look at the Galilean moons, the four Gal moons Galileo discovered by various spacecrafts. Uh, let's to conclude, what is the truth? The truth is that the Earth goes around the sun. It is known, it is well understood today. It rotates on its axis. Uh, this, uh, all the objections that Aristotle raised at the time have been resolved. We don't have strong winds on Earth because the atmosphere rotates with the Earth. We are not thrown away of the surface of the earth because of gravity. If there was no gravity, yes, we'll be thrown away. Uh, we don't see parallax from stars because the stars, just as Aristarchus had reasoned, are very far away. In fact, there is parallax, and if you use very precise instruments, you could measure it. But uh, uh, and 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 that is used to to measure the distance of the stars, uh, and so this work of all the geniuses before set the foundation for astronomers and scientists of future generation this discovery that the earth went around the sun was a huge step forward in understanding the motion of the heavens next came the work of of tycho brahe and johannes kepler and isaac newton who we will meet soon uh, and and that's how science is uh, work of any great scientist generally stands upon the shoulder of of other great scientists before him uh, science as contrary to what might appear it's a it's a social endeavor people people uh, uh, contribute and and cooperate with each other science is cool uh, thank you that's all bye